Hello there everyone, this is Soul Super 17 here, and uh, like usual, let me get through this. I do not own anything from Black Clover, and I do not own anything from DMC, that means Devil May Cry, this is the video game series, Capcom owns, I do not own nothing of theirs, I do not own like the characters from both series, nothing. Alright, so let me get, just explain that this is the 100th sub special. And the only way I could have, well, I couldn't really figure out any way how to else do some stuff from the other series besides, you know, probably pulling some major BS. But with this one, it kind of was interesting to uh, you know, figure out. And you guys want a hundred times sub special. Like I promised I was going to do. And I'm like at 117 right now. or No, 118. So, I'm going to do it. Right now, I'm at my friend's house, which I upload the videos to on like every weekend. So, hopefully this weekend I can upload my videos of the Naruto what if, the other Asta what if. And yeah. But this is, what if Asta was... A son of Sparta. Part one. Okay. As we begin, it's a month before Sparta and basically his wife, Eve, I believe. Yeah, let me just double check that real quick. Okay, it was not Eve. It was Eva. I double checked since I had Wi Fi here. But yeah, uh, okay, so, you know, it's him and Eva, basically, she's having another child besides Dante and Virgil. And this is a boy that can name Asta. So, Asta is born half demon, half angel, but not able to use his powers just like Dante and Virgil from the DMC5 reboot because of one... That was a, they said a reboot, and, uh, you know, I was, I was told that they, uh, kind of just said it was just a reboot, or I read something on. So, yeah, going with that. So, the reboot version of them that everyone hated, yeah, those are his brothers. But, like I said, this is a month before something happens. And after of him being a month old, Eva and Sparta are being attacked by Munra. But instead of be like be able to just like save Ver well be able to save Asta basically, I was about to say Virgil. This happens. So Eva uh, is having Asta and she's like running. Munra's soldiers are coming after her just to try to basically kill kill the child and Ooh, they they can't catch up, they cannot catch up to him, well to them, so she opens up a portal, and she's saying to Asta, "You'll be safe where you're going. This is a world without demons, a world without like without like people that will hunt you down." So she, when she opens up the portal, she puts Asta in and. Then the, when the portal closes, she starts running away. So, when that happens, Asa was teleported to Haj Village. Not knowing the danger that they were in. You know, the, 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 well, the priest, the father, took in Asa along with the other boy named Yuno. If you hear, like, something in the background, that is my friend playing the game. Just, uh, he's not speaking because he doesn't want to be in the video. So don't mind him. He's just playing the game. <laughs> but, yeah. Um. Anyways. So, a year, a couple of years go by, and, you know, Sister Lily does come in. But, also doesn't I try to say anything. He's just sitting in the tree, just taking a little snooze. And then when the father says, Asa, wake up and come over here and introduce yourself. 
He just says, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Ugh. So he gets up, and basically he says, hi, my name is Asta. It's nice to meet you. So, oh yeah, before I forget to mention, Eva did leave some stuff for Asta, like a note of his name, and a couple other things that he would, that they made for him. Basically weapons. And these are going to be not ordinary weapons. And he's going to have a grimoire, and this is going to be a fire leaf grimoire. And, yeah, you'll see what's going to happen. But anyways, so after he introduces himself, he, she basically says, nice to meet you. And she looks close at him, and he's, she sees that this child is, well, very different from everyone else. One of his eyes is like a silver everyone's like a crimson red I, I just want to have been that way so yeah then you know she asks what's wrong with his eyes he says oh I was just born with this can't figure it out so yeah I mean nobody understands well, after many years, no one understands how Asta is, like, very strong, very fast, and, like, be able to do things that no one else can. Like, he can literally jump higher than anyone else. He he can basically, like, go past people without them even noticing. Basically, he kind of has, like, a trickster like Dante, but it's a little bit more different. I'm kind of bringing that in from DMC3. But, yeah. He's just able to move really fast and get past people if he's... And, uh, basically, we got to the point where you know was getting, like, attacked. Well, well, it was, like, we're past that point, actually. But let's just say, like, everyone found out that he could heal from any wounds. Because, definitely, when that guy hit him with his magic, let's say he used his magic and it was, like, some type of, like, wind magic. It hit him, sent him flying. He came out of a barrel... With a piece of metal through him. And then he just ripped it out. From the other side of where it was. And says. Ouch. That really hurts. Now. Let's see how much it will hurt you. And then basically. The guy runs. Because when he actually disappeared. The guy just felt something about to pierce him. And he just ran. So you know and him have that rivalry. A rivalness still. So yeah. And, basically, when, um, so, right when it's, like, the start of the anime, though, everyone knows Asta has a type of magic, but they don't know if he'll be able to get Grimoire, so, he does say, if you uh, don't get Grimoire, don't be upset, Asta just has a layback attitude, and this one would be like, eh, I don't really care, why should I even come to Magic Knight anyways, they're just... Kind of stuck up people, so I don't care. So they put the people at the church saying he should try at least because he's really strong. He should be able to get in. And he's like, okay, okay. So, oh well, yeah, ugh. I hate when that happens. So basically, when he goes to where to get the grimoires in it, he's just. Kind of stand next to you know. Asta's really tall, well, at the same height as you know. Cause like, why not? He's on a Sparta. So he's tall. His hair is still the same way. He just isn't that loud. Well, he isn't really loud at all. And he already found out about he might be from another world altogether. And then he uh, has these weapons. So, he left them at Hodge Village, basically church, like the, like the father asked. And, so when everyone's getting the grimoire, the same thing happens with you now. He doesn't, like, also doesn't want to, like, show, like, he cares. He just, he's just walking away. And let's just say something starts to happen. 
there's a book, there's something being, like, slamming against the wall, sounding, like, no one knows why, and I was just thinking, huh, what's that sound coming from, and then he's just looking, he's seeing some books falling from the ground, I mean, falling from a shelf onto the ground, he looks up, and a couple minutes later, a book just starts bursting out of the wall, Everyone's just seen this dark aura around it. And I was just saying, huh. This looks very old, but something seems familiar about it. Oh well. Guess this is my grimoire. Funny enough. So when the grimoire gets to him, there's a big amount of energy just coming off of it. He doesn't understand why, but for some reason there's a weird symbol on it. He can barely make it out. It's the five leaf. He just sees the five leaf clover. Is huh? Five leaves. Cause that's what he thinks he's seeing, so he just goes with it. He grabs it, and everyone's just wondering what type of grimoire it is. They can barely see it. it's old looking. Then some nobles start to make fun of him, saying, you got a worthless grimoire, looks so old and tattered, that's what a commoner should be like. So, oh yeah, I even forgot to do not own this picture. Yeah, let me put that in. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, um, yeah. So I also just looked at them with a laid back, lazy look, and it was like, well, you're royalty, right? So, why do you have only three star, only three clovers? Doesn't mean the fifth one's the strongest? And they just get mad, because he just smirks at them, and he's like, yeah. Uh, you guys are losers. See ya. He's walking away, you know, it's just staring at him, just laughing what he just said to them. Because everyone saw that he got, you know, got a four-leaf grimoire, and yeah. So, Asa's just walking out, and then he decides, I'm gonna take a nap. So, he just jumps over to the edge of the, where, like, all the trees are, like, the edge of the wall, and just starts walking to the forest, and just finds a tree and decides to take a nap. Same thing happens with the royals trying to get Yuno's fourth grimoire, and it says he, you know, they're as soon as they find that other guy with the five year grimoire, they're gonna destroy it too. Ch Yuno takes care of them. Chain Mage comes in. You know, Yuno gets tied up, and then Hasta just feels feels um you like hear Yuno screaming, saying, "Give me back my grimoire! I have to." fight someone, and when he gets up, he was, like, starts, comes out, a few minutes later, the guy's about to leave, he sees, you know, his grandma, he just gets kind of ticked off, he goes, hey, ugly, so the guy, hold up, alright, sorry about that, that was just my friend's mom, so, yeah, uh, anyways, so, when also jumps down, he made he he jumps up again, but he made like that platform. Yeah, I know. I'm putting some Dome May Cry three stuff, but we haven't gotten to Asta's weapon, so it won't be like the DMC. I'm doing like the DMC universe basically, like what Dante and Virgil will do, be able to like Asta will have some of their little abilities, and he'll even have his own. So yeah. Um. Anyways, when the chain mage sees his grimoire, he's saying, "Wow, that grimoire looks very old and tattered. It's not even worth taking it and selling it to someone." Us uh, just look at his grimoire, saying, "Yeah, it may be old and tattered, but at least it's better than yours." And he goes, "What?" And the chain mage just uses his chains to wrap around Asta. And he said, how, you know, like, there was something dark coming off of the chains. Like, they don't, he doesn't know what it is. It's, 
He's like, he's funny. He was like, what is your magic? What are you? But these chains aren't draining Asta's magic. They're only showing it. So he goes, huh. Alright. Well, and there's also then a little bit of light. So it's like, hmm, devil, demon magic, and angel magic right now. Alright, anyways. So, light and darkness is coming through the change. And he just says, well, this is going to be fun. So he just breaks out of the chains. And the grimoire comes up. And a sword starts coming out of the grimoire. Right into the ground. And also doesn't really need a train because he's already, already super strong. So he grabs the freaking sword. And he just says to the then chain mage. Like, so we could do this two ways. You could do this the easy way, or you can do this the hard way. You give back my friend, my rivals, my friend slash rivals Grimoire, or I can shove this sword right into your stomach, send you flying to a wall, and knock you out of one, one swing. So the training manager just says, You're just a kid, you can't beat me, and then you know, throws all the chains at him. I also just basically just slices right through the chains. Breaking them, and they're dissolving, and he's thinking, so this can dissolve magic, or nullify it. Cool. And he goes, what are you? And let's just say, there was also, an, like I said, there was like a, like he got stuff from Eve, Eva, and Sparta. Like he got a weapon, you know, basically a weapon that he could use, some like, maybe like, Let's say he also got like a gun, and um, then he also got a necklace. This one being a combination of being red and blue. So let's say like it's purple, right? I hold up. So yeah, he has a purple necklace, and basically he it starts glowing because his. Like I said, silver and crimson are starting to glow. Now he comes flying over to Asta from the church, and let's just say the per, the father of that church he had it in his room, and basically he was seeing the glow. He goes like, "Huh? That never happened!" Be and then it just shoots out of the freaking roof, going all the way to Asta, and then. It it just goes right onto it. It just comes right in front of Asta. And basically, right when Asta grabs it, he let's just say he just transforms. Somewhat. Like, he doesn't, like, go fully into his double trigger mode, but he somewhat goes into it. There's, like, an image of it. Yes, in order the dog, in order the dog. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, a somewhat image of it. And this guy's just... Just thinking, What are you? And then... So he puts on the necklace after he, while he was saying that, and then he just blitzes the guy. He's taking up the sword. Basically, he says, "What I am doesn't really matter. What only matters right now is, is if you're gonna freaking live or die. Hopefully, you live." He says, and then he hits the guy. Same thing happens. He goes flying into the wall, and basically, he gets knocked out, not dying. Asa does run over to him. He checks his pulse. He goes like, Whew, man. Thank God he's not dead. And he goes, and then he looks at the sword and the grimoire. He goes like, who knew this sword could like hold this big giant sword? Then he starts thinking, huh. I wonder if he can hold my sword in. But it, he has a mix, he has a sword that's mixing between of Dante's and Virgil's. So yes, it I'm making it a, 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 like a katana mixed with like yeah the Yamamoto mixed with rebellion. So just imagine that. It looked really weird, but hey, they did the Sparta and Eva did not expect to have a third son, and uh, it was on the short notice, so they just uh, like they asked someone just to make both of the weapons combine the one, and uh, yeah. 
so that happens. You know, basically he thinks about that. And then his other weapon. Pistol. He just has one. It basically has like no bullets, nothing. I'll be able to fire. Because what I'm going to do is both those weapons are going to go into the grimoire. When he gets back to the, basically the church. But yeah, so you know, asked him. Did that... Is that your magic? You can make weapons? It was like, uh, I don't know. I mean, we never really knew what my magic was. Remember, you know? I never even used it, and this is the first time. So, yeah. It says, oh, yeah. And then, you know, the same thing happens in can. They do a little fist bump saying they're going to become the Wizard King. You know, that happens. Everything. But when he gets back to the church, he basically... Shows them the grimoire, and then he goes t to the father saying, Can I have my weapons now? The little kids did not know, only you know and Sister Lily. So when he goes into his office, he goes into the cabinet. Nah, let's just say, um, it's like a closet, but just one of those big closets that you would like have to open up both doors to. And so he pulls out what Asa had with him. And all the kids are going, like, what are these? And he says, oh, these are my, well, what my parents left me. And they go, like, huh? So he pulls out his sword. He has a sheath. It's like the Yamamoto. But the sword is like a katana mixed with rebellion. And then the gun is just basically that. You know, just a regular old pistol. No one knows about it. No one even knew about the, so... The kids are just wondering what type of magic is this, or what type of weapon this is, so... And Asa just says, I don't know, but hey, I have an idea what I can do with So he puts both of the weapons into the grimoire. Basically, the anti-magic demon senses this is very... He, he's a very strange kid. He has both demonic and angel energy coming from him, so he's allowing the weapons to go into the grimoire. So when he'll pull them out, they'll be covered in the anti-magic. And he'll be able to shoot anti-magic. Not from a sword or anything else. Like, well, he could do that with his Yamamoto Rebellion fused together. Um, I don't know what, what you guys can name, what I can name it. So I'm going to leave you guys up to that. But the pistol, eh, just on the top of my head. Since, it, since Dante's pistols were called... Every Ivory? Wait, Ebony? Ivory? I cannot pronounce that, that name right, so please do not write in the comments saying I'm saying it wrong. It's always hard for me to say it. Let's just call it... Let's just say um, there was like a signature of like a rose on it. So yeah, let's just call it a rose. Like, he just calls it rose. There's a design of a rose on it, so yeah. He just says rose. So, you know, they, they do training. He figured, you know, Yuno does his training and all. Asta does his training, but he figures out he has more power than he knows. He's able to, when he uses his actual weapons that he was got with, he's actually able to make slashes, just like Dante. He can even summon some, like, projectiles out of nowhere. He's able to dash through the air. And he's able to even, um, he's even able to basically jump off of stuff with ease. So, like, he's very, he finds out he's very agile and very, he can easily do stuff without, any, without him even trying to put much effort into it. So, he can even do the Virgil thing where he can just teleport, like, backwards in order to different areas. He doesn't know how he's able to do this with ease because he didn't really train that much. So he's not like the canon Asta. But somehow he's just strong enough. He's very strong. Like, it didn't matter if he trained or not. He ate properly because he helped out some of the villagers and they gave them, like, fruits and vegetables and meat. So, you know, everyone was being, being very, very uh, well fed in this. What if? So, so the day of them traveling to the Clover Kingdom, it takes them like to Canon. 
no one asks him if he can become a magic knight, like a commoner like us can become a magic knight, because nobody questions him about anything. And, um, yeah. So when they get there, to the top of the hill, Asa says, look at my new home, that's where I'm going to live. And I'm going to let everyone from the from the church plus you live there. You know, it says exactly the same thing. You'd be looking if I let you live there. And it was like, hey, so, you know, they get down. They get to the Clover Kingdom. Basically, everyone looking at, you know, thinking he's a royalty and stuff. Everyone's looking at Asa like, some, some people don't know if he is royalty or not. Or he's just a commoner. They can't even tell because... He dresses as a commoner, both of them do, but, well, yeah, also dress up like a commoner, because his clothes were, like, hard, let's just say they were hard to find because of, he was, because he just moved a certain way, and they kind of just, like, ripped, because I said he, he found out he was able to basically move with ease without even trying. So, yeah, when that happened, his clothes got ripped. So, yeah, they uh, had to, like, sew it back up a bunch of times. Patch it up, too. So he looks like a, he looks like a commoner. And no one's like, you think... they Because he, they think he's tall, and the some girls are blushing at him, basically. Because of the way he looks, so... They don't know what to do. He gets there to the Magic Knights exam. Everyone's cheering for them. You know, saying hello there, future knights. Good luck to you. Asa's oh, just a little cocky, saying <laughs> this is gonna be too easy. You know, tells him don't get too cocky like you usually do, Asta. I was like, come on, you know, we both have grimoires. Basically, we're two commoners. We both have extremely powerful grimoires. And me, I was, I have weapons before, well, he even I got this grimoire. And my necklace, you saw what I, happened with me. I had like that weird power mode or something came from me, who knows. I also kind of had studied, but he didn't really care because of, he just does what he does. So no one really questioned him anymore. So, yeah, so, when they, you know, see the grimoires, give them a number, and, you know, lend them in, you know, it's, like, same thing happens. Asta is saying, like, oh, is this even a grimoire? He says, yes, don't you see this, see this clover? And they see it, they can't tell what it is, just say, okay, go in. And, um, you know, the hog guy thinks that Asta, you know, has... Barely any magic, and it's just like, whoa, level Grimoire. So you think he's gonna be easy pickings. Also, you know, all these birds are not, are coming around him, but when they do, they just leave right away. This is just, basically, Asta's demon magic and angel magic just wards him off. Never does come to him. Sits on its head. And he just says, one bird. I have one bird that's sitting on my head. Great. So he just says, hey, little bird. You mind getting off my head? Because I'm about to lay down here. Never, and this is just narrow, so, you know. she She's just sitting on his head, and he's just saying, Alright, I'll go against the wall and lean on it. So the encounter with Captain Yami does not happen. And they get told that they're going to be doing a test. One with Magic Room, one with Projectile, and, you know, Fire Projectile and everything else. And, yeah. And then the combat portion. Because those are the only ones I know that happened, or I think would be better off to do. So, when that happens, Asa gets a magic broom. He just tries to fly it. It doesn't fly. So, he just says, okay, freak this. And he just starts teleporting onto other people's brooms. And then, just teleport up in the air and just double jump. 
and then starts teleporting back down. Like, he didn't care no more. Because he didn't. So, everyone's amazed by this, but they don't give him points because he's supposed to do a magic broom. He, uh, actually, they do give him points. Yeah, they gave him some points. Um, to the uh, fire test with uh, their type of magic. Asta just opens up his grimoire. They're like, huh? He pulls out his pistol and he just starts shooting the freaking target. He just destroys it. He goes, hey, you told me shoot the target. You didn't say how, though. And then he puts it back into his grimoire. And, uh, everyone's kind of freaking out because they don't know what his magic is. And so the combat portion. The hog guy doesn't, like, challenge him. Some random oral does. And let's just say this one was had, like, uh, like earth magic. So he made, like, a... And this was, like, an, a narwhal who was trained, like, to have, like, earth golem. He summoned out three. So... Mr. Napole, yeah, let's say he pulls out his katana, he pulls out the sheath, puts it into the ground, and he pulls out the big giant sword, basically the demon slayer sword, and then he pulls out the pistol, pu puts it in his pocket, and he says, he, while he puts one sword into the ground, which is demon dual sword, holding the... Yeah, I'm also rebellion hybrid sword. Just saying, come on at me if you think you can win. Just, you know, just doing cockiness. Pretend though, if you want to do this, pretend this way. Him fighting Cerberus from DMC three, Dante. But to imagine it's just Asta, and he's just doing that cockiness, and. He sends out two of the golems at him. So, right when he, right when Asta knows that these, like, he doesn't even try to do nothing. He just dodges them with ease. And then when other worlds, even the cats are wondering what he's going to do now. Is he going to do the teleportation thing that he did? <laughs> but... Also, just then disappears, but he just do like a trickster thing. He's able to get go behind people really quickly. So then, when he just like actually just start slashing at one of them from a distance away, it starts cutting, and some of the arena starts get kind of got cut too. So pieces are just falling down along with the golem. Everyone's wondering what, and then he just starts running. At the other golem, pulls out the basically the pistol that he has, just so starts shooting at the golem. P pieces are just you know, like the magic is all like the bullets are just like black, but they're just like black anti magic bullets. And when he starts shooting them, they get into the golem. Pieces are starting to you know, come down, he can't reform it. Then he just jumps up and just starts hitting the golem with the sword. It's cutting right through it with ease. And then when he gets down, he just Brings up the sword through the edge. It's just like going right through all the way to the top of the head. And then when he lands back down, he just starts falling. So he then starts casually walking over to his demon slayer sword. It just says, what is that all you got? Well, this is supposed to be a challenge. You're a rural, right? So come on already, right? just show me what you got. So the world gets mad, makes the golem even bigger, using up most of his magic, and tells him to kill him. And also then just picks up the sword, the demon slayer sword, just disappears, and chops the golem right in half. Also grabbing out his gun in midair and just starts hitting the ground with his anti-magic bullets. And just when he lands says, you lose. Deal with it. And the guy just falls to his falls to his feet, just huffing a puffing, just and even scared. So after that, the same thing happens with Funo, he wins. But also just says though too, I was gonna become the Wizard King. So yeah, that happened. And the captains don't know what to do. 
He's very skilled, very powerful, but his magic is very weird. No one knows about. So only Captain Gami raises his hand. He's saying he's very interested in him, and uh, yeah, that's his only reason. They're saying, "All right, since no one else wants to take me, I'm doing it. I'm gonna go with you guys." So Captain Gami takes Asa. Um. Yeah. yeah. He takes off the. He didn't eat that lizard thing, so he doesn't have to go to the bathroom, and you know doesn't have to save him. So he gets there and you know to hide out. He's just saying, "Wow, this place is run down looking." To Yami, and he goes, "Yeah, but it's our hideout, home sweet home, and all that." Basically, then when he opens up the door, Magna is. Chasing, locked, locked, you know, it's dodging him. Same thing that happened in the cannon. Basically, um, then Magna sees Asta saying it's our new recruit. He says yes. So, you know, he does the gauntlet of fire, the physical test. Asta just wrecks him in and then he's tired. And then right one is like the magic. Asta does, like, he already had his weapons out and everything else still. He just kept the, you know, the Yamato Rebellion hybrid. Out still and just in the sheath and the pistol at his side. So when Magna shoots the, well, throws his fireball at us, he just shoots right through it. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna do what I was saying. And so, yeah, so everyone's just shocked that he just shot through fire. The bullet misses Magna barely, so he got a little cut mark on his face. And he goes, like, huh. So. Do I have, like, infinite bullets or something? Because there's, like, no, like, he knows that, like, they're, like, bullets because they're anti-magic and they shoot out. So he says, like, so they're kind of, like, some type of projectile. So, bullets, he says. Anti-magic bullets. Do I have, like, infinite power of this? If so, then cool. <laughs> and then was like, what? You don't even know if there's, like, infinite. And he was like, he doesn't see, like, a, the, like, the magazine for it or anything because there's, like, none. For this one, so he just says, "Oh, it's just this because the black at that time actually is covering the whole entire thing besides the rose part. That's the only part that's red, so that's why he's called it rose." And he's just saying, eh, "I don't really know, but they're anti-magic bullets, so I mean that's why I called them because they're able to dispel magic, so anti-magic." So I was like, "Oh, okay, you know, he's saying like how cool it is. They gave him the robe and everything else, and no, well." Same thing, like saying she she looks at him, saying some common scum, you know, worthless. Cause yeah, she's still in that mode. So Magna shows him to the room. He just starts cleaning it, and then it's like nonchalantly just starts cleaning it, and Magna's going like, "Huh, you're very uh, you're cleaning this like you're excited, but you have a nonchalant face to you." He's like, "Oh yeah." Don't know why, just nothing ever bothers me. Basically, it's like nothing like ever really fun happens. But hey, if I'm coming at night, I may actually show one like more emotions than just being always upset or something, right? And I was like, yeah. All right, see ya. You know, tomorrow if you're training, you know, the tour around basically, because you're also gonna train too. See what you got. He was like. Just put the thumbs up. So he sleeps. Nera's with him too. Um, but before he sleeps, so he goes, Huh. What should I name you? Since you've been following me around. And so he just says, Nero? And her, the head just starts parking up. And he goes like, Oh, so you like it. So he just starts patting the, her head. I was like, Okay, your name's Nero from now on. I don't know if you're a girl or a boy, but who cares? Then he just starts falling asleep. Yeah, really thinking, I'm a girl, basically. So the next day, man, uh, you know, is walking over to his, Asta's room. Asta opens up the door at the end, change, and there was still sleeping. And he was like, Oh, wow, this sh place shifts around. And I says, Yeah, it does. So he shows him everything. The beast, the beast look at him when the beast was actually about to bite into the meat and Asta, like usual, like in canon. 
he just puts that like he just says they look into his eyes and it just looks like this if you even do anything to me that's gonna hurt me you'll regret it so the beast just grabs the piece of meat with his mouth and then just starts eating Panda doesn't understand what just happened but he says oh, oh who cares so Noel uh, basically he, they meet up with Noel. Noel, you know, talks to him saying that like, he doesn't even like hold out his hand to her. He just says hi. Then she does whole entire thing where don't talk to me, you commoner. And then he just like keeps his mouth shut. And Amanda's talking to her, and then he just listens to them argue. While Anas is just thinking, what am I gonna do today? Also, what's with this freaking royals, the royal, to need, like attitude like to me. I did nothing wrong unless I say hi. Uh, and this is why I did not want to become a magic knight in the first place. So, and she looks at him because he's still looking at her like he doesn't really, like he's not even paying attention to her. And she's basically saying, what's wrong, what's that look on your face basically? Like, what's wrong with you? And he's just saying, he doesn't say nothing, she says, speak to me. And he's, he's like, oh, so now you want me to speak. I was just being, I was just shutting up because you uh, told me not to speak to you. And, uh, she's, like, starting to get red in the face, and he goes, like, whatever, you you can speak to me now. And he's like, yeah, this is why I did not want to become a magic knight in the first place. And she, and everyone just, Madna and her look at him, he goes, why? Oh, because usually magic knights are snobs. Perfect example, I see he looks at Mad Eye and points to Noel. Noel was getting mad, she points out the water. And he's about to open up his grimoire to get out the get out of his rose gun. And you know, she hits Madna instead. He goes, Hey, what was that for? I'm your senior And then she goes like it doesn't matter if you're my senior, you're you're just a commoner, and I'm royalty. And walks, to, and then she does say, "I'm gonna quit the black bulls." She throws down the, you know, her robe. Walks away. Magna just, you know, just says, "What's her problem?" Asa says, "I don't know, but who cares? Let's just get going." So after the tour is done, he walks, you know, he walks away trying to look for a good training area. Then he starts hearing noise, a noise. He follows it along near him, and basically, it's Noel trying to get the start. You know, trying to do like the hit the target with her water. She can't do it, so he walks out and says, "Oh, you can't hit nothing with your magic. So is that like you lost control, or you just have bad aim? If you want, I can teach you how to aim right." And then the whole entire thing where she actually loses control of her magic happens. He doesn't get flown away. He just jumps back. Well, he just teleports back in the air and teleports to the ground. Yami already came out saying, Ah, oh, man, what's, what's the matter with our young magic knight with royalty girl? Oh, uh, Noel, yeah, what's wrong with her? So... Then Asta tell her she disappears from Nest and he just says, Oh, she lost control of her magic. And he's like, Oh, and Asta says, Did you not sleep last night? You know what I'm saying? Yami just says, Eh, I'm waking up from hanging over. He goes, Oh. Wow. He goes, Yeah. And also, I did not really get no sleep because of. For some reason, I forget. <laughs> Yami's just telling him. Then everyone comes out, and then he says, Hey, uh, Asta, right? He goes, Yeah. Can you do something with your magic? Anti magic? He goes, Oh, sure. So he brings out the Yamamoto Rebellion Blade, and then he just charges it up and then starts slicing the air, sending waves of like slash marks, and then starts coming right through the magic. So Noel falls, he teleports up to her, he catches her, teleports back. Puts her on the ground. She starts thinking I was going to laugh at her. Same thing happens with Cannon. Asta says to her, Well, so what if you can't control your magic? We're here to help you because we're teammates, right? So get rid of this, the royalty snobby attitude and, you know, let us help you. 
So she starts blushing and saying, okay, I will. And, you know, Vanessa gives her back the robe, saying she'll help her with her magic, and yeah. That's where I'm going to leave it off, everyone. Um, if you guys like this, please let me know. If you guys want another part two, let me know. And, um, uh, all the other people who actually have given me ideas for the what-ifs, thank you. Like, literally, thank you. Um, your what-if ideas are going to be in another video. Another videos I will make. I will, win, I will like, take screenshots of the ideas. And to somebody who said about... I think you said, like, Tanjiro with cremation. Um, I think you said that. If that's not true, then please like, let me know. But, yeah. Um, this what if was kind of a rushed one because I did not really know what I wanted to. And I just wanted to make this 100 special because I saw how many views I had and I was, like, way behind. So, I just made this in a rush way in my head but i got the whole entire story where i'm gonna do it now so yeah um you guys can tell me what name i should give it for their yamamoto slash re i mean mixed with the rebellion sword if you guys can't come up with an idea in the comments or anything you know then i will just try and think of a name for it in the next video so yeah if you guys want me to continue on with this series just let me know but hope you guys have a nice day and night. Bye.